Hello and welcome again. This is Richard and I'm going to share with you the third video in my series of five on the tools to be more effective in your conversations. Today's discussion is on respecting personal boundaries. Keep in mind that people will not respect you unless you first respect yourself. It is in that sequence. It's important that you develop and maintain personal boundaries and we're going to talk about what that looks like and then give you an action step on how to do it. When we communicate with others or or interface with others and we lack our own boundaries or we don't have a lot of governor on our behavior or our words, that will be reflected in how people treat us. Self-respect is respecting oneself, meaning you have to start with who you are while understanding and accepting your own weaknesses and strengths. Now, there's a nice balance here that needs to be addressed. First of all, some people will overstate their strengths while minimizing their weaknesses. Now, some people can call that charisma. Other people will call it pompous. Most people will see it as pompous. So make sure you have a good handle on your strengths and balanced out with your weaknesses. But the opposite end of that isn't any better. People who overstate their weaknesses and minimize their strengths often lack self-respect. Without a voice, you are susceptible to being bullied and you will never ever be respected. A peacemaker or a pacifist is rarely respected because they're unable to resolve the conflict. This is often associated with feelings of inner strength and self-confidence and has nothing to do with an introvert-extrovert component. This is really about learning how to protect your own boundaries. If you learn how to say no to outside influences that you know are not healthy, perhaps are not fun, they're not productive, or they're inappropriate, You will have an immediate ability. You will know inside that you are comfortable in your own skin. In other words, you can say no to immediate gratification. You can say no to things just because they're popular. Because every time you do and you give in, you lose self-respect. And that's reflected by how others will treat you and view you. Here are three tools to regulate your behavior. Number one is to set up your boundaries and then learn to protect them in a non-offensive, non-destructive manner. Oftentimes, we get ourselves into social hot water when we permit immediate gratification or maybe an errant thought to make it to our mouth. When we give in to popular sayings, trends, behaviors, we're not being ourselves. There's no authenticity inside that space. That means you're just following the crowd with the attempt to be like others. Well, there's no self-respect. That's a collective mindset. So here's what I've done. And we talked about an action step. I put together my rules of engagement a very long time ago. I haven't changed them in all the years because it seems to cover it. So if you look to the right, you can see that I have a me pyramid and a you pyramid. We're only going to cover the me pyramid in a very short time frame. Anytime you speak above the line, it's going to be productive. Anytime you speak below the line, the line is right here, is the me pyramid. It's very unproductive. When I try to get others to see it my way, I'm trying to seek agreement. When I am trying to, to blame others for things that go wrong, that's blame. And when I'm defending myself constantly, that's justify. And if I don't accept or question assumptions within it, I'm denying. So speak above the line is my rule of engagement. Number two, be present. Have you ever spoken to someone who's texting, emailing, not focusing, looking the other way, watching TV? How do you feel in a moment like that? Well, that's a rule of engagement for me. If someone starts texting while I start talking, I stop. And I won't go on until I have their attention. There's no reason for me to be talking because when they start texting, they lose 10 to 15 IQ points immediately, which means they may not hear or understand what I'm saying and there won't be any communication going on. That has helped me more times than I can say because I'm respecting my own space. And lastly, maintain neutral space. That simply means... Bring in as little bias as you can into the conversation. Try not to make judgments, but question what's going on. That's a great, great tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about getting your own. So here are just a few. 
It's yours, not mine. Um, so speak above the line, meaning give opinions when requested. Don't give them when they're not. We talked about that uh, in our last tool. Question all assumptions averts blaming. So if someone makes a statement that may or may not be true, but if you learn how to ask with clarity on what they did in a neutral manner without bias, you then get deeper inside that, that relationship. It's safe space still. And then make sense of behavior instead of judging it. Try to understand why someone would do it, whether it's illogical to you or you agree with it or not. If you make sense of it, you're able to remain more objectively. And the last one, pre-plan your behavior in the future. Pre-plan your comments. Think through what you would say in a situation. This will avoid some embarrassing moments if you haven't done this. All right. I hope this has been beneficial to you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Stay tuned.